Jam on Toast! Hey everybody, welcome to the Jam. I'm Cameron Ryan Taylor. The Toast is to Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. This is a response to Harry Movie Club. Please go over to Mr. Harry Britt's channel for all your Harry needs. So the short sale on this one is that a crusader returns back to England and has to take his home back from the local corrupt sheriff of Nottingham who's essentially trying to upgrade himself to lordship. My love it for this one is Kevin Costner trying to figure out how a telescope works. <laughs> My hate it, there was actually a lot of overacting in this, but Alan Rickman's character in particular, in particularly right after he gets his face cut, I was just like, what? That's happening? Because <laughs> it's just like this real girlish scream and then like baby temper tantrum type thing, but with the spoon. I can't imagine this will be a popular opinion, but the MVP for this one for me was Morgan Freeman. Uh, he was the out cider the entire movie and probably the most I'm not sure stoic or sensible seems both like good words basically most of the other characters are a little crazy especially the bad guys let's go on to categories aesthetics I typically overlook music but when I do notice it it tends to be in favor of the music uh, they definitely use music and sounds to help amp up the uh, emotion and the intensity of the scenes. Visually everything looked gross and dark and very serious like the time was. So when you needed a dank dark dungeon, you got a dank dark dungeon. When you need a ruddy run downtown, you got a ruddy run downtown. You got this beautiful forest with weird thieves that are all homeless and gross in it. You got gross homeless thieves and a big beautiful forest. Nothing was really misrepresented and a lot of the characters really showed who they were just by being on the screen. In particular the friar who was big loud and hefty so you could definitely tell that that's the sort of character he was and how he would interact with the others even if he wasn't melee competent. The witch and the priest both definitely uh, had similar things where like she was very obviously the crazy witch um, which would have been funny if she wasn't that. And then the bishop was very laden up with gold and, and very high end of the church which was common enough at the time and you saw something similar with Alan Rickman's character he was amazingly clean throughout the movie whereas even Kevin Costner had dirt on his face most of the time aesthetics gets an 88 character development I think you honestly took a well, roller coaster for character development here Robin before the movie is a noble he goes through all this horrible stuff through the Crusades which was just a bad idea in general he actually managed to escape befriending the enemy essentially I don't know how the Moor ended up there but it was supposed to be an unlikely pairing of companions then he comes back and he has to find out that he's no longer a noble essentially he fights his way through Nottingham's men he fights with Maid Miriam which was a nice twist and every time you meet a named character you get like this little exposition of development which is neat because almost every other time they show up we get a little bit further but it's essentially on a curve because you have a limit that honestly you're gonna get to a point you're going like, okay I, I get who he is so they charge through with the, those developments and you get that from Robin and he becomes the the hero that the people need not necessarily the one they deserve character development gets an 85 storyline yeah this is basically the story of Robin Hood nothing surprising there it's not exactly the most refreshing story and it's pretty old back further than Disney's bright happy Fox movie it seems to me a lot of the stories from back when were pretty grim and this is one that just happens to be that way yes Disney put a happy face on it at some point but I'm glad it came back to a more serious tone to try to enjoy it though it's completely accurate for the time period and what marriage means and how people are sold to one another it's kind of insane that a noble woman like her would actually not be in a position to boss him around in some fashion whether she had a contingent of guards or another nobleman with her as an escort which would make more sense I just feel like we've had a lot of movies lately where it's either depressing or there's a rape scene and I'd like to move on storyline gets an 80 Compulsion. I gotta say, I thought this movie would stand up a lot better. And regardless of being reminded heavily of the Ewoks and all the forest scenes where they're like pulling ropes and hiding under brush, I equally ask questions like if 
everyone is poor, who has the food to sell the other people? Granted, very minor things. And generally, it's a good movie. I don't think I was in the mood to watch it. I think that's really what it was. But typically for me, if we're gonna go back to a fantasy style movie, I'd like there to be magic. It's just a brutal time period, and this movie definitely shows it. It's just not always the most fun. Compulsion gets a 70. Now if we throw all that up, we get an average of 80.75. For my wrap-up review, I've gotta say, I honestly kept expecting Princess Bride to suddenly be on my monitor. Probably gotta go see that soon. That aside, it's not a bad movie by any means. It's probably a really good movie, honestly. I'd recommend it to anybody from high school up just because there's the rapey scene. That's it for me. I'm Camerai. You... Think that's it for me. I'm Camerai. If you don't like me, bite me. If you want to see anything else we're up to, go ahead and click the annotations and they'll take you to our other channels.